The book that I chose to read is called Feminist Theory from Margin to Center, and it was written by Bell Hooks. Bell Hooks, who actually purposely spells her name with lower cap, uh, lower uh, capital letters, so there's no capital letters in there, so it's not um, misspelled. Uh, her real name was Gloria Jean Watkins, and her pen name was Bell Hooks. She was she's an American. She was born in Kentucky. Uh, she's an author, a feminist, social activist, as well as a professor. She has a doctorate in literature from the University of California. She was born into a working class African American family. She has had over 30 books published, uh, plenty of scholarly articles. Uh, she gives public lectures. There are plenty of uh, YouTube videos out there of her lectures. Uh, uh, and she has also appeared in multiple documentary films. The major topics that she covers is class, race, gender, history, sexuality, history, feminism, and mass media. I would say that she's most um, famous for her feminist theory. Uh, common themes in what she writes is about community and communion, and in order to have healthy communities, we um, the two um, topics at the forefront is communication and literacy in order to have healthy communities. So um, the book Feminist Theory uh, deals with women's liberation and that it was structured on a very narrow platform. It was uh, feminism to start with, I want to say too, this book was written in 1984. Um, the historic feminism was pretty much only for white females who were mostly privileged. Uh, she talks about the, the board housewives. So um, she her famous claim is that feminism should be viewed as an interlocking of gender, race, and class and needs to be theory-based. But the importance here is that it's not just sexism or se that you also have to take into account both gender and race and class. Um, Bell Hooks says that no other movement has been as self-critical as the feminist movement, but there's also been women's ability to change that has progressed the movement. Um, despite the feminist movement being criticized and bashed by many, uh, Bell states that everyone has benefited from the contemporary feminist movement and all the cultural revelations that it created. Uh, there was uh, friction between the white feminist movement and the radical revolutionary feminist movement because they saw the necessity of including race and class into uh, movement. But despite this movement, sustained feminist revolutions have not been created. We still see many of the issues today book was published in 1984. We still see women's reproductive right being challenged actually just the other day. So um, there are still much work to be done by Bell Hooks and women need to unite. Um, I think this uh, little infographic shows a good interlocking. Um, the title of the book refers to black women, um, what she considered was they were living on the margin of society. Uh, they were being part of the whole, but they were never part of the main body. So they had a very interesting perspective where they were aware of both the center as well as the margin. And Bell says that uh, the oppression side, they were not really able to see this, um, but the, <laughs> the, the black women, their survival was dependent on them being able to see both sides and being able to work with both. And also she states that their survival was also dependent on them being able to see their part in the whole, but also that it was important that they saw that their part was vital and necessary and that helped them overcome poverty and despair. Uh, some concept themes, terms in this book. First of all, the board housewives, which she said um, 
started this whole idea of that the feminist movement back then was just way too narrow. Um, she talks a lot about sisterhood, a lot about that these white, mostly white women, or um, they talk about wanting to be part of a group, wanting to be part of a sisterhood. However, she said um, the non-white women don't really have this need because they're all they're they are already part of a sisterhood. So um, she also addresses, which was a very difficult chapter to read, was the one on on violence and just the violence that many, both women and children, suffer. However, she did note that just because most violence is done by men um, does not mean that women are not capable of it. And that is also us as sisters that need to stop each other, from example, if someone is uh, abusing their children. And also she calls the home is kind of the safe space, so therefore, if the black man feels um, invalidated or insulted at work when they come home, it's the women that gets to take that abuse. Again, it was a hard chapter to read. All of these were actually. She also talks about parenting and also about educating women, which I will come back to. And another two big concepts, of course, is the classism and the racism. These two really opened my eyes. Um, my reaction to this book is that this is probably one of the most influential and eye-opening books I have read, but so it seems that this whole class and the whole social justice book that we're reading has, is difficult to read. You kind of have to take it piece by piece. You can't just read it all through one. It helped me gain an understanding of the feminist movement. And what was so important was that how race, gender, and class are interlocked. She explains that while, for example, me as a white woman, I may not truly be oppressed, but I think I am. But also taking race into consideration. Um, so just me being born white, I have a privilege that not many other people have. However... I'm on the um, bad side of whatever when it comes to gender because I'm a woman. So you can be both oppressed and you can be part of the other side. She talks a lot about the patriarchal society um, where male dominates. However, she states this is harmful to both men and women. -y. And women. There needs to be equality between women and men. But what she points out is, what men are we talking about? Because there's a difference between white men and non-white men. So perhaps, she says, maybe white women uh, have a higher standing, so to speak, over non-white men. So there's a lot of different uh, puzzles going on. And that's why she said that this needs to be completely... Um, sexism needs to end because actually sexism will lead to racism and classism as well so they're again they're all interlocked and they need to end she calls it the white supremacist capitalist patriarchal values um, she talks a lot about the the need for a unifying definition of feminism and also the point that many women do not want to be involved with feminism. They don't want to be associated with it. So it's important that everyone comes together and that is based on theory. Uh, the connection to the course content. I feel this book could even be used as class material. It is so good because it relates to many of the concepts that we study in class. For example, we've already covered like racism and classism uh, and sexism. So this would be a great book or maybe like a small reading of it. Um, so feminism, she say, feminism should include everyone that's exploited, discriminated against, and or uh, oppressed. Um, I do proudly would like to call myself a lifelong feminist. Um, and it's one of the most relevant things in my life that I have studied just because I felt that it gained, I gained an understanding of so many um, things. 
and why I'm sometimes treated the way I am um, as a woman. Uh, specifically women in education, she said many of the, the women in the feminist movement are educated women, so they may not pay attention to this, but we need to make women's education an agenda, especially literacy, because much of the information that was based was on, um, was written mass communication, and it still is, so is therefore it is so integral that we have good literacy training programs uh, for women. 1984 was, of course, pre-Google, but things are still very much the same. So literacy skills and critical thinking skills are uh, very important. She also points out that the written materials need to be easy to understand for everyone, and it does not need to follow the academic standards in order to reach the most women. So it does not need to be complicated and difficult reading or writing. It needs to be so that everyone can understand it, so that some uh, women are not excluded. She also points out the gap between feminist theory and feminist practice. So what can I do? How does it relate to me as an educator? Well, first and foremost, I'm a public service and outreach employee, so this directly relates to my job because we are the bridge between the academic world and the people of the state of Georgia. Also, as uh, an HR employee, I can help to actively recruit and retain women, minorities, and under underutilized groups in society. It very directly re relates to my research on burnout, well-being, and resiliency because it can be directly associated with the feminist movement and women's issues. Women, and especially women that work full-time outside of the home, it has been shown that they do the majority of the housework after work. So, um, what Bell claims that we need to do, take a lot of pride in the work and the household work that we do. However, based on my um, research on burnout, well-being, and resiliency, we still need to educate women on taking on too much and also be able to teach women good self-care and boundaries so that they don't burn out. And I want to end with this one from Bell Hooks. And she says, I will not have my life narrowed down. I will not bow down to somebody else's whim or to someone else's ignorance. Thank you.